much for joining us on opening day. For nearly two and a half years, we were down, but the special effects show is back. It is July 1st, and we are back at Universal Studios Hollywood, where for officially on the schedule, the special effects show is back for the first time since 2020. Very excited about this first show time today is 12.30. I think they had some preview uh, shows this week, but this is the official day that is back, Friday, July 1st, and the park is all decked out for 4th of July, so I'm very excited to see the show finally returning. Fans of the park may remember that the special effects show used to be downstairs on the lower lot next to Backdraft, where Transformers currently is. And that was like a three-room show. I used to love that show. You'd go from room to room and learn something different about movie making. When Transformers opened in 2010, the show was moved up here to the upper lot in the Castle Theater. We're at stage of 2015. It closed briefly for a revamp and was open till 2020 when the park closed. So I'm not sure if this is the exact same show because I have not seen a preview of it, but looking forward to checking out, see if it's the same from before the closure or if they've made some changes. So the show starts here at 1230. We've got a few minutes. I got my tuna melt from Mel's. You can eat that, then head over to the theater.
look damn sharp. That's a nice outfit. Thanks, Greg. Now, since the very beginning, the basic concept behind the filmmaking process has remained the same, to make the audience believe everything you see is real. That's right. And today's filmmakers have more tools than ever before, high-tech cameras, super-fast computers, but they still rely on a category of effects that are so distinctive, we call them special. And the first special effects were practical effects, effects that are done on the set in front of a camera. And our first example of practical effect will be models. Universal's 1932 film, The Mummy, made use of miniature effects, including scale models, like the one you see here in the title sequence. And we know that's a model because if you look closely, the real pyramids do not say The Mummy on them. <laughs> but Universal relaunched the franchise in 1999, and the Sphinx, if you see the opening shot right there, that Sphinx is this Sphinx right here. This is the actual model that was used in that movie. And the detail on the sucker is absolutely incredible. And I think Craig would agree, models are still an amazing way to fool a camera. Absolutely amazing, that's a great model. Another filmmaking tool that fools the camera is the glass mat. In the terrifying film The Birds, the brilliant Alfred Hitchcock had matte paintings created to achieve the eerie look that he wanted for the little town of Bodega Bay. Check out your side screens. And knowing that in this bird's eye view of that town, only two things are real. The fire and the parking lot. Everything else was painted onto a sheet of glass to create a glass mat, and then set in front of the lens during filming to create this. Pretty cool, right? And then the birds were layered in to complete the eerie effect. But there's still another category of practical effects that involve performers, and not just props. It's, it's called practical stunts! Stars, let's meet him. Ladies and gentlemen, Brian Combs, Mr. Nate Mitchell, and this is our stunt coordinator, Brock Mark. Welcome, gentlemen. Well, let me ask our stunt coordinator a question. Brock, would you agree that stunt performers like you three often fill in for actors when there's a big fight scene? Yeah, actors don't like hitting in the face. Hidden <laughs> face? Yeah. Like this. Oh! Oh! You okay? I don't know. You okay? Yeah, I'm great. <laughs> okay! All right, well, you guys go get set up. Wow. So, clearly, when it comes to staging fights, the art of illusion plays a very important role. Every move has to be done as realistically as possible in order to fool the camera without anybody getting injured, of course, and then the rest is up to these guys to make it look believable. Let me set up the scene. It's a dark alley, dead at night, and a couple of nefarious characters are lurking about. Ready and Shot, but do you know its origins? 
Jack Foley was a man who wore many hats. He was a writer, he was a director, he was even a stunt double. But it wasn't until he started recording Sounds of Universal back in the 20s that he began to make a name for himself. For over 30 years, Jack worked on Sound Stage 10. And if he couldn't recreate the sound that he wanted on that stage, he went out and recorded it live. Inventing a technique called Director Picture, Fully and his small crew, they recorded their sounds directly to the finished film in one single take. Their time into the action had to be perfect because one mistake meant they had to start all the way over from the beginning of the film. And to help us demonstrate Fully, put your hands together for our first volunteer! We have the Bush family from Pomona, California! Great, check it out. Just like that. And kids, you can try this at home because parents love it when their kids fake an injury. Good times. So before we get to you guys, we're going to take a look at how the professionals do it. Everyone in the audience watch your side screens, you're going to see a split screen shot. On one side, you'll see Identity Thief starring Jason Bateman and Melissa McCarthy. And on the other side, Universal's Foley artist, Hard at Work. Take a look. <laughs> Right, D'Angelo? Our program. So these are your props. That's your monitor. Watch that when your mobile pops up. Be nice and loud. Side screens and let's see how you did. Get over here and give me a rest. Hmm? <laughs> in every genre, the studio really made a mark over the decades, created some of the most terrifying thrillers and horror films of all time. Take a peek. from Psycho. She rocks. <laughs> and the rest of you will get that on the way home. <laughs> oh, we're excited for our next demonstration. Yay! Yes, all the way from Palmdale. Everybody say hi, Laura. Hi, Laura. Well, Laura, Laura was selected because she was an awesome scream. Oh, Laura, if you've just checked into the base hotel and suddenly you come face to face with a knife wielding Norman Bates, how would you scream? <laughs> wow! Have you been murdered before? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> no. Well, Laura, as we all saw in the fight scene a few moments ago, stunt performers have a very high pain threshold. The question is... Do you? <laughs> well, do you? Because our next demonstration is all about blood. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll pop quiz. What did Alfred Hitchcock use for blood in the classic film Psycho? Shout it out! Not ketchup? I heard it right over here. Chocolate syrup. That's right, chocolate syrup is correct. Psycho was a black and white movie so they could get away with chocolate syrup. But nowadays, movie blood has to look so much more realistic. Laura, thank you for giving us a hand. Literally. 
Now, kids, I have to remind you, please do not try this at home. Try this at a friend's house. <laughs> All right, Lord, put that hand out there for you. Perfect. Don't move, because I don't want to hurt myself. <laughs> okay, great. We're not going to use the machete again. Just think about it. No, don't use the machete. Okay, well, we'll use this knife over here because it's much sharper. Here. All right, everybody, take a look at the side screen. The strangest cooking show you'll ever see. Or I want to hear that scream when you feel the pain. One, two, three! She's fine. Oh, what do you know? That's a classic cinematic horror technique called a Hollywood blood knife. Check it out on the big screen up there. Look at that. It's a big blade. It slides in and out of the handle. It's got a little notch in it that's right over Laura's arm. And on the back side, we've got this ball filled with blood. When I squeeze it, it makes a delicious chocolatey mess. <laughs> it's really a wonderful effect, but not nearly as wonderful as our volunteer, Laura! Laura! Woo! You are amazing! Let me more escort you back to the stand on that dry blood stain. So, Laura, you're in a cemetery, you're surrounded by monsters. Let's uh, strike a pose of terror. Here it is. And let's hear that scream one more time on three. One, two, three!
viscous substance called fire gel, and that's a good thing because that, that's going to help protect all the exposed areas of his hair and his skin. Now you guys may know what it feels like if you've ever been out sunbathing and missed a spot of sunscreen. You can imagine how often we feel for Brian if he missed a spot while on fire. Not good. Up next is the application of fuel and Davis anybody with these fire extinguishers just in case of early ignition. Absolutely. Hey, you ready? Ready. Brian, you ready? Ready. Feeling. At the completion of the shot, Brian is going to make his way down the to this blanket, and this is where he'll be put out. And at that point, we'll all be waiting anxiously for two thumbs up. That's a sign from Brian that he is okay. If we do not get that sign, we know that we need to get the medical team involved immediately. While they continue this process, I'm going to pause for just a moment to remind everybody in this theater that these are three trained professional stuntmen, all three of them have many years of experience, and they're all currently utilizing highly specialized equipment, clothing, formulas designed with one purpose in mind, and that is to keep that stuntman, Ryan Combs, safe. What you guys are about to witness is incredibly dangerous and not the kind of thing that anybody should be trying at home. Patrick, can we bring the house lights down, please, and set our boxes here? It looks like they're just about ready at this point. Yes, but everyone stay seated. Rock, that's yours. Thank you. Nate, you ready? Ready. Brian, you ready to burn? Ready. Ready and action. Waiting. You're waiting. Universal Studios Hollywood, July 1st, start of the 4th of July weekend. First day officially for the special effects show to come back. Got to see the very first show. They did a nice little intro. It's basically the same show as before. A few little minor tweaks. Jerry is gone and a little astronaut flying across the stage was gone. But the fire effect was there. All the movie making magic. Very, very cool. Interactive with families from the audience. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. If you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button with the notification bell turned on so you know when we do our next video here from Universal Studios Hollywood. And if you're not following us on social media, you can find us at The Funnel Cake Vlog on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Now, obviously the video is done, but i got to go home and edit this and get it up. Thanks for watching, and a happy 4th of July. Hey,